Hi, so we've derived a number of results algebraically and graphically in the solo growth model. So let's go over a bit of a summary of the model and the predictions that it makes. So for starters, the solo growth model says that the capital stock today is the sum of our past investment. So past investment in each period accumulates and that is our theory of capital accumulation. However, the, this capital runs into diminishing returns and as such, there is no sustained economic growth generated from capital accumulation alone. We can have sustained economic growth in the model, but capital does not cause it because as we increase capital, the marginal returns from it decreases. We can increase our level of economic growth for a number of years by increasing the savings rate or increasing our productivity parameter, which we call A in the model. However, this just causes us to grow to a new steady state and in the very long run, we will still not have long run economic growth caused by changes in these parameters. So the solo growth model does determine and it tells us how rich a country is in the long run and how wealthy it is. So the wealth economy in the long run it also gives us an understanding of why different countries have different growth rates uh, based on their varying underlying parameters in savings rates, productivity level, depreciation and population growth rates. So those are the good things of the model, those are our positives. However, we do have a number of negatives that still go unanswered in the solo model. Many economists would say that changes in productivity are more important than looking at capital accumulation and so far we have not included anything that explains why productivity changes. We've assumed this is exogenous to the model and we just take it as given. It would be useful to know why productivity changes. We also don't understand why countries have these different savings rates and productivity, why they invest different amounts Again, we just take that as exogenously given and work out our steady state based on that. But why why does a poor country have a different savings rate? What is actually causing them to have different wealth in the long run? And so the other question is, why do we see sustained economic growth in the data? So obviously, if you look at macroeconomic data for countries in the world right now, Although currently we may be seeing recessions, in general we see long-term growth, countries taking off. So why do we see that when the, the model doesn't necessarily predict this? Uh, so these are a number of drawbacks to the model that the model doesn't answer. And, but we can augment the model and add in things like human capital and add in endogenous productivity changes and this is, these are a number of things that have been added to the basic solo growth model in various papers and they, they start to get more accurate results. So why, why do we learn the solo model? It's a very good base to build off. Uh, it's just a model that tends to be covered in intermediate uh, macroeconomics courses as a sort of starting point uh, and lots of, lots of essays people will write uh, at the intermediate macro level will sort of say oh the, the predictions are incorrect from this model and um, however that, that kind of misses the point because the solo model is a building block for future models uh, just because yeah in the course of about two hours I've covered this course and obviously economics has advanced a lot since this basic model was formulated and Models can get very detailed looking at the, the factors affecting productivity, the factors affecting savings rates, and we can start to get very complicated models that do, do model the world economy fa fairly well. Uh, so we can't get bogged down in the specifics at this stage of the fact that the solo model doesn't necessarily predict the correct alpha level, it doesn't predict the correct share of different factors of production because it's a very simple model. We've covered it in just a few videos and it doesn't make too many unrealistic assumptions. So that is ba a basic summary of the solo model. 
uh, we should view it as a building block to more complicated models when we start to look at more specific aspects of an economy. So that will pretty much conclude this video and I guess it concludes the basic um, summary of the solar growth model. I will go into more detail on say the solar swan growth model, let's endogenize uh, other aspects of the model so we can better replicate the economies across the world. So check out the playlist for that or subscribe and check out my other videos as we go more into detail and and cover a lot more economic models. If this was at all useful, do please also drop a like rating. Thank you.